Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. There is a church inside of me. <laughs> Do you believe that this morning? Is there a church inside of you? See, because there should be. There should be a church in every one of us because we, my, my friends, are, are the church. We are the church. Uh, and, and what is in me gives me new purpose. It gives me a uh, a, a new, a new way forward, right? A new way to think. It, it gives me uh, a, something has been born inside of me, and I, 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 I always say this verse, but Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, and everything becomes new in us." Amen. And I was, I was, uh, as I was, as I was, uh, kind of not really studying this week. I was just reading. I came across this verse, a couple verses actually, and I, I, I want to I give this to you because I think it will really uh, shed some light on what, what God has done, what, what he has done in us. Amen? And, and Jeremiah 33, verses 20 and 21. Really powerful uh, little scripture. Two verses. Actually, when I was reading, I was just reading because I, I make a point when I read the Word of God because I do it every day. I just read it. I try not to study it, okay? Because often I can just stop and go back and study and so as I was reading, I read through this, and I got uh, another two chapters down, and, and uh, I finished reading in the morning. I think it was, uh, I don't remember what day it was, to be honest with you. I finished reading, and I put my iPad down, and I, I, I went off to do whatever I do. And uh, uh, throughout the day, I could not stop thinking about this, this thought. And I, I, I want to bring it out to you today in the context that we are the church. Amen? And so I want to I look at this, uh, Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21, and it says, says this very powerful thing. This is what caught my attention. It says, thus saith the Lord. Isn't it important to know when God is speaking to you? <laughs> Isn't it important? I think it's very important. When God speaks, we should listen. Amen? He says this, thus saith the Lord. If you, in, my, in King James it says, if ye can break my covenant, of the day and my covenant of the night and that there should not be day and night in their season and then verse 21 says then ye may also then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant it's really powerful did you know that God God had a covenant with Light or day? Did you know that God has a covenant with day? Did you know God has a covenant with night? Did you know that? <laughs> See, I, didn't, I really had never really thought about it because light, day, is inanimate. It's not even animated. It's not a person, right? Light is just a, a, a spoken word. That's all a light is. Light was spoken... And it came into his existence. As a matter of fact, I did a whole message one time about God being the father of light. And, and it's really powerful when you think about that, that God birthed light. He thought about light and he created light when there was no light. There had never been light before, God said in Genesis, right? The first chapter, let there be light. Amen? And at the moment that that word goes out of your mouth, you, I can think about the, the word that says that not a single word goes out of God's mouth. It doesn't go out and accomplish what it's supposed to do and comes back to him with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with something, a task done, right? It comes back to him done. Something is done. When he speaks, something happens. Amen? And, that, and that's really powerful to me when I think about that. But I, I thought it was profound that God would set a, set a, com a, a, a covenant or a, a promise with, with light. I was like, that's just weird to me. Because I talk to people all the time and I, I, I speak to them and I, I expect when they, when they hear something that, they, that something will happen. Amen? I expect that. And I think God expects that when, when he speaks to us, he expects something to happen. He expects us to change. He expects us to go a different direction. Amen? It, 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 most of us do. do. We, we, do we really want to. But, but the, you know, God has, has that covenant with light. <laughs> He set seasons, right? He set time. 
He said, I mean, other than daylight saving, I don't think that's of God. I think that's, uh, uh, that's just crazy how people can take an hour and give an hour, you know, and, and how it's 4.30, it's dark, and it shouldn't be dark at 4.30 because it just feels funny like that when we mess with time. But, but, it, but it's, it's impossible. I'm going to tell you, it's impossible for me, amen, to break God's word, amen, with light and with day and with night. It's impossible for me to control when the sun comes up or when it goes down. It's impossible for me to even think about all of the mechanics and, and the orbit, orbital mechanics that are involved in the sun, the moon, the stars, and just in our little solar system and, and how awesome and mighty God must be when he speaks and something happens like that. I, it's impossible for me to understand that. But God has a covenant with day and with night. Amen? Aren't you glad about that? That I don't understand. Aren't you glad to say it like this? I'm so glad Pastor Everett isn't smart enough to understand the covenant God has with all of those things. Aren't you glad? Because the world would be a mess if it was up to me. Amen? But he says this. He almost challenges us. If you can break the covenant, then you can break my covenant with David. And think about that. The covenant with David, and I don't have enough time to really dissect that, that thought properly I'll come back to it someday but the the covenant that that God has with David brought us Christ brought Jesus brought the promise to us amen we are the ones that are the recipients of David's promise amen we receive that by faith in Jesus Christ today amen this it's 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 (laughs) let me let me ask you a question does light speak does light speak at all does it speak It doesn't speak in an audible voice, right? Because it's inanimate, it doesn't have a soul, but it has purpose. Yet light represents, come on, word proceeding with purpose, amen? The the light that I see with my eyes, my natural eyes, it, it represents the word proceeding out of God's mouth with purpose, amen? And I know, I know that I know that I know today, amen, that God is God, And he's bigger to me just when I look at light. Amen? (laughs) It's an evidence of power beyond our greatest imagination. Amen? Beyond my imagination, how God did it, how he thought about it, how he made light. I don't know. How he made day or night. I don't know. But I I can see the representation of his word proceeding from his mouth. Amen? Often we're guilty of celebrating the day and mourning mourning the night, but shouldn't we be celebrating God? Amen? Shouldn't we come to a place where that's what we really want to do? We want to celebrate God, amen, and His power and His majesty and His abilities that are beyond my abilities. Amen? (laughs) Last week I said this verse, and I, I, I bring it back. I keep bringing back little tidbits for you through this series, but in John 14, verse 18, it says, I will not, Jesus said, I will not, he was praying to his, he hadn't died yet, but he said, he said, I will not leave you comfortless, right? I've prayed to the Father, I will not leave you comfortless, and then he says, there's that colon there, and then he says, I will come, okay? So, so the same word that was spoken, because Jesus was the word made flesh, Jesus was the word, the the incarnated word of God, he was in, in the flesh, and he, and he spoke and said, I will come. Amen? And I believe that he has come. Amen? Jesus is proclaiming that he will fulfill the word spoken back in Jeremiah 33, 22. Amen? He's proclaiming that, that he will come. He has spoken. Amen? God has spoken. I want to I declare to you today that, that, that Jesus has come and taken up residence in our life. And I wish that we could and would begin to walk that out. Amen? Like the church that we're supposed to be. Amen? The church that we are supposed to be. Right? (laughs) Jesus is alive in us. And I declared in this place that we are the church. Amen? We are the church. 